Hi, Simeon. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Is Muster going okay? Yeah, considering everything that's going yeah. on. Mm. Um, do you know if Maggie is going to be going? Um, she's planning to. You know, she had an appointment in Georgetown, and so, you know, if she... It's a matter of when she gets back. So she may be a couple minutes late, but but she's planning to join. Okay, good. Do you have many like finals and papers and so forth left to go? Yeah, I'm gonna have finals up till the 18th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So kind of toward the big bitter end. <laughs> <laughs> How's the semester been for you, though, with everything? Um, yeah, it's been really busy. You know. Um, um. Yeah. 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 It's been different. You know, just because every we've been meeting with everybody online. You know. Um. The time is, and I think maybe because one day is not so much different than another. There's this kind of like time warp. Like, like where did the semester go? <laughs> it feels you like know? the semester just started. It's like it's been the longest semester at the same time. Yeah, like some days would just go on forever. And then you'd look at well, three weeks. Where did the three weeks go? <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very, very different. Mm, yeah. I hope next semester is a little better, maybe, because at maybe. least we could be going back on campus, but we'll see. Okay, okay. That's the plan. Yeah, so far, yeah. 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 Are you home? Yeah, I'm at home now. And where's home? I'm in Boise, Idaho. Boise? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, wow. I mean, I haven't met many students from, from Idaho. No, no, not hardly any. <laughs> no, very few people live here to start with. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, how did you end up coming to UW? Uh, I went to like a college fair, and they were one of the few schools I wanted to apply to because I knew I wanted to be on the East Coast. Especially in New York or DC, so yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and doing international affairs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. All right. Let me make sure you're the presenter. There you go.
And what year are you, Kelsey? I'm a sophomore. Sophomore, thank you. And would you say most of the members are sophomores, juniors? Yeah, I would say sophomore, junior. The founders, both of the co-founders are both sophomores as well. So. Okay. Yeah. That's Hannah. Hannah's one. Hannah and Maya. Are okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Maggie. Hello. Hi. Sorry. You're good. <laughs> Are you out of breath? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been here a little earlier had there been parking anywhere in my neighborhood. <sighs> we got here just in time. Hello. Okay. I say we wait maybe a couple more minutes. Sure. Yeah, no, no, no worry. Um. 
All right, so I guess it's five after now, so you guys can feel free to start the presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, let, let me introduce myself and Maggie can introduce herself. So yeah, my name is Paul Hoyt O'Connor. So I've been uh, with the Center for Undergraduate Fellowships and Research for um, about 12 years. Um, my own academic background is philosophy. So I taught philosophy at different universities and um, worked with students and faculty um, on, on various programming. Um, and uh, what kind of attracted me to GW was a chance to work with uh, students and, and faculty very closely. And so it's been really a kind of quite rewarding time uh, for me. Um, but Maggie, if you want to say a few words about yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Maggie Delaney. Um, pronouns are she, her, hers. I came to GW and the Center for Undergraduate Fellowships about four years ago. Um, so this last year has been weird, but it's been the case for everybody. Uh, my academic background is in communications, and I have a master's in higher education. Um, and prior to this, I was working in study abroad. Um, but GW really intrigued me because of how dedicated the students are um, and, and how hands-on they tend to be with a lot of their projects and a lot of their involvement. Um, so yeah, that's that's a little bit about me. Um, yeah, so let me uh, let me say a few words about um, the Center for Undergraduate Fellowship and Research. Um, basically, between Maggie and me. Um, you're looking at it. <laughs> we're we're the center. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and as the name implies, we do a couple of things. Um, one is we we definitely work with students who are interested in applying for nationally competitive fellowship programs. Um, probably Fulbright is the most popular at GW, certainly among Elliott School students. Um, and it's always good to kind of talk about Fulbright a little bit just because there's a range of opportunities that that program provides. Everything from teaching English to doing research to study um, at a university abroad for a year, um, fully funded. So, uh, so Fulbright tends to be very popular, um, but there are other programs um, that we work with too, and probably of special note just maybe in regards to funding for graduate school that um that folks um in your group may be interested in is definitely the, the pickering graduate uh foreign affairs fellowship uh, which would provide funding two years funding for um, um individuals looking to pursue a degree in um, an area related to international affairs with the idea of um, eventually starting a career in the U.S. Foreign Service. Um, very much like pick, uh, very much like Wrangell, the, the, the Wrangell Graduate uh, Fellowship Program. In fact, they're pretty indistinguishable. <laughs> the differences between them are minuscule. Um, but that would be another program that um, a number of students would be interested in applying for, I think. Yeah. Um, but just given sometimes Fulbright, you know, graduate programs that provide scholarship money to pursue a degree that perhaps align with a specific career track, uh, sometimes students think, oh, well, fellowship programs are only for postgraduate. And that's not true. So we work with a number of programs that um, students can apply to during their undergraduate years. Um, one that's, again, very popular with Elliott School students is the Critical Language Scholarship, or CLS. And, and you have to be a currently enrolled student to apply for that award. Um, one of the things that's really quite interesting about that program, particularly it's a, a sort of intensive language um, program for the summer in one of 15 critical languages um, is that they are 
especially eager to receive applicants from students of color. Um, every year, they are really, really quite proud that 46, 45 percent of their uh, scholars are um, underrepresented students. So they're really, really eager um, to receive applicants from students like yourself. Um, but then there's also, you know, the Wrangell Summer Enrichment Program that's open to sophomores, juniors, and seniors, so long as they continue to be full-time students. Um, and there's the PPIA Junior Summer Institute, which juniors are eligible for, uh, which provide um, a really pretty intense summer experience, taking courses, a lot of mentoring, um, a lot of professional development activities and leadership activities with an eye to uh, cultivating future leaders in international affairs or internationally oriented careers. Um, and so there are those kinds of programs too um, that we work with. And so it's not the case that those programs are only for seniors. Um, and happy to, we were happy to talk about any of those programs too. Um, but sometimes I think students tend to wonder, well, how can I be a competitive applicant? What would be, you know, how can I prepare myself for applying to one of these programs? Um, and it, it's definitely, you know, being involved on campus, uh, volunteering off campus, being engaged in life generally, all those are really great things and would be important to show your commitment to service, um, whether it's on campus or off campus. But I think also what's important, particularly for the most competitive awards, um, is engaging in research while you're on campus, you know, and, and working closely with a faculty member and getting to know that faculty member well. Um, this is especially true for the very uh, competitive graduate scholarship programs, because these programs are, are, are thinking that you're going to be applying to some of the top rated pro, you know, graduate programs in the country or perhaps in another country. Um, and those programs are expecting you to have um, amassed significant research experience in the field already as an undergraduate. Um, and even to be a competitive applicant for those graduate programs, I think the expectation is, yes, you've, you've done that kind of work. Um, and so, um, getting involved with undergraduate research is, I think, really quite crucial. Um, and that's where I think the complementarity between our work with fellowship programs and our work with undergraduate research can sort of come together. Um, so that, uh, that's the other side of our office. We, we work with students who are interested in getting engaged in, in research opportunities on campus. Um, um, and that can take all kinds of forms. Because sometimes, you know, students don't necessarily know what undergraduate research means, or at least what it, what it could mean for them, you know, and how to get started and what the time commitment is. And, you know, how is it that you get connected with a faculty member exactly and so forth and so on. Um, and, and so we're, you know, we're really quite happy to meet with students and, and to kind of talk through um what a research experience might look like for them and, and how they might get started um, our office does also administer some of the university-wide undergraduate research awards um, and those are you know, the gw undergrad research award and the shore award which provide funding for students who are interested in pursuing a, a faculty mentored research project but we're also familiar with the other programs around campus that support students. And, and probably as you have already uh, discerned, you know, GW is a complicated place and 
Um, it's pretty decentralized, and you have all kinds of programs offered by schools and departments, and um, and that's the case with 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 respect to undergraduate research. Um, so we can help students navigate that scene, you know, and figure out what are the programs that would be a really good fit for them, given where they are in their undergraduate career and where they see themselves going long term. Um, and, you know, and sometimes, too, your know, students ask, well, why should I get involved with that? Um, and sometimes it's it's really important if you're thinking about graduate school. But um, but I think it I think research is a is a great opportunity to to feel like you're contributing to our understanding of the world. Um, that instead of kind of always reading about what it is that other people have discovered, you're making contributions right, to the field. Um, and in the process, you're getting to know your own field more deeply because you're, you're coming to practice the methods and te techniques by which knowledge grows and our understanding accumulates. And so I think just being part of that scholarly endeavor is, is an enriching and rewarding experience. At the same time, you're getting to know fact, some faculty really, really well, and they're getting to know you really, really, really well. And so when it comes to letters of recommendation, you know, those would be the faculty that you would tend to go to. Or when it comes to letters of recommendation for fellowship programs or for graduate school or um, for future jobs. So, so there are all kinds of ways in which I think um, undergraduate research is something that would be really worthwhile to think about um, during the time at GW. Well, those are the those are the you know two sides of our office, um, and in regards to undergraduate research for Elliott School students, uh, you know, again there are the university wide awards that you'd be eligible for, but. Yeah, the school has its own programs too. Um, maybe the the, um, the really star for them is the uh, the Dean Scholars Program, which sophomores are eligible to apply for, and that deadline is usually in the, in the spring in March, and that would be a two year program uh, pursuing a research project. Um, with an eye to eventually maybe presenting and publishing it somewhere, and along the way receiving additional mentoring and guidance when it comes to undertaking that research project, but also when it comes to applying for uh, fellowship programs and the like. Um, and I would say too, what's re what's really nice about that program for some students is it helps to connect. Elliott School students with full time faculty on campus. So maybe you haven't necessarily met somebody that that's working, you know, in the field in the area that you're really interested in pursuing in depth. But the program would help put you together with the faculty members who would, would be experts in in those fields. So so it's really great that way too. But that's a, just a kind of brief synopsis of of the kinds of stuff that we do. Um, and when it comes to, you know, meeting together and um, that we're, we're a pretty small, intimate group, we, I uh, would appreciate, you know, uh, answering questions that you have. I think that would be the most valuable thing uh, for you and what would be, uh, you yeah, know, information that you could take away from uh, from our time together. Yes, Deja. Hi, yes, good evening. Can you all hear me? Yep. Awesome sauce. My name is Deja Vandy. I'm a first year at the Elliott School. And my question is how formal or informal is a research project process typically? Can I um, reach out to a professor and say, hi, professor, um, I'm very interested in our course. I'm loving what we're discussing and talking about. And I want to know, 
are you doing any research on this particular topic or are you doing any research in the field and how can I participate and help you alongside with that research or do I typically come to the center and look for things or just how does the process generally work? Well, I, I would say um, what you said at first. <laughs> yeah, meeting with the professor <laughs> after class. I mean, it's harder now, you know. Um, yeah. We're we're all meeting online, but yeah, exactly. Like expressing your <clears throat> expressing your interest in what it is that you're studying and the work that that professor is doing. That's exactly how. I if think I another useful tool with that. Um, any faculty member who's not an adjunct faculty member is completing research of some capacity and they have to publish that research. So if you throw their name into a Google Scholar search, you're gonna come up with their abstracts and see what their particular research area is. Um, and that can help facilitate those conversations. I know in my interactions with faculty members, they love nothing more in this world than to think <laughs> about their research. Uh, so if you walk in with a little bit of information about right. that research ahead of time, it's gonna make you stick out, stand out in the best possible way. Cause that faculty member's gonna be like, okay, yeah, they've done their research, okay. Right. Um, and so that can be a good, it also makes it a little bit less awkward. So you're not like, tell me about yourself. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I love and it. I yeah, go ahead. I have two more questions, if I may ask. Um, I wanted to know, also, is it okay to cross schools or majors, I guess? So, I'm in Elliott, but if I have an interest in maybe psychology or journalism or just any other interest, is it okay for me to go to another professor outside of Elliott or outside of my comfort zone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you'll notice that a lot of professors in Columbia College, for instance, have joint appointments with Elliot. So they're, you know, like a professor of German in international affairs. There's a professor of chemistry in international affairs. So in fact, they're, they're in, you know, Elliot School faculty too. Um, but even if they're not, yeah, you're, you're definitely welcome to mm -hmm. talk to them. We're all, we're all one family. Right. <laughs> <laughs> question is how important involved in research um i know some people say oh it looks great on your resume it's a great thing to do uh, what if i'm a student that isn't really interested in research or doesn't know if they're interested in so they try it once and then they don't like it is it you you're researching that we realize we don't like research or um, do we just not like it as a whole? Or is, is I guess my overall question, is it okay not to be involved in research? Because um, I know a lot of people say, oh, it's a perfect resume builder. And if you're, you know, I think when it comes to resume builder, you shouldn't do things because of the resume, um, do things that you like, and it will happen to be a great resume builder. <laughs> um, uh <-huh>. like, yeah. <laughs> I think it really depends on what your kind of ultimate goal is. Can you guys hear me? Okay, cool. Um, I, my little name thing isn't showing up and speaking. It's probably because I'm the one talking. But um, <laughs> I think it ultimately depends on what your goal is. If after your time at GW is over, you want to do a Fulbright research experience, you're going to want to have more than one one semester long research experience in your back pocket to kind of pull from. But if your interest is not in, in the research capacity, being involved in other ways is going to be equally as important um, because it's what you're pulling from that and how you can communicate that in the future. Um, so if you're interested in a ETA posting. So Fulbright has three different kinds of postings. There's the research, there's the English teaching awards, and then there are academic programs where you're going and having them pay for you to go to grad school, which is great. Um, but if you're interested in the English teaching posting, it may be more worthwhile for you to get involved with DC Teaches, or um, that's not what that's called, but <laughs> in my head today, um, or possibly acting as a tutor or a peer mentor um, within your department, that could ultimately be more worthwhile. I know it can be daunting as a first year student to kind of have to make that decision, but try things out. If you hate research, probably not going to want to do a Fulbright research in the long run anyway, because you're not going to like it. <laughs> um, so it, it's really contingent and it really depends. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I just kind of add to that a little bit. Of, um, you know, sometimes what happens is too, you know, doing research is, you know, can be experienced well. Uh, well, that was great, but that doesn't really kind of like light your fire, you know, I mean, it's like, and, and it's important, I think, in trying to clarify, well, what is it that you really want to pursue and devote your energies to? to to know well what is it that you're not interested in you know and so and so you know it's it's also possible to have different kinds of research experiences to, you know as part of the exploring process and figuring out well what is it that you're really interested in hi i have a question real quick so i know a few times i've been on um, handshake and there's lots of different ads for different research opportunities, but it's mostly STEM related and science. Like if you need like a lab assistant and stuff, is there a different resource that we could use to find research opportunities that are more like towards the IA discipline? Um, well, I would say a couple, uh, one, one additional resource to handshake would be, uh, GW student research commons. Okay. Um, you know, there'll be other kinds of research assistant positions listed there, both paid um, and some unpaid. Okay. Um, what you oftentimes find when it comes to the paid research assistantships on that site, there, there will definitely be some STEM ones, but there will also be um, research assistantships with some of the research centers and institutes connected with Elliot, um, like the Institute for International Economic Policy, for instance, they oftentimes have uh, paid uh, research assistantships. Um, and I think looking at the research centers and institutes is a really good idea in general. Because those are the those are the places where faculty are receiving grant money, okay. and if they're receiving grant money, that sometimes means they have funding for undergraduate research assistance, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. And so that's always a good thing to look at. Now, the way to to sort of be um, in the know when it comes to possible opportunities like that would be if there is a research center or institute that you're really interested in sign up for their newsletter because a lot of times they will advertise positions in their newsletter figuring they're reaching the folks that they want to reach mm -hmm. they're reaching the people who are interested in them okay thank you Hey Maggie, did you have something? <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, okay. Chatting with faculty members is always good too. I mean, GPA yeah. is the world's smallest petri dish. The world is seven degrees of separation. GW is tops one, but academia in general is maybe three degrees of separation. <laughs> so research with someone okay. else. Right. Um, uh, so getting involved in class, making sure you're speaking up, getting to know your faculty members, if they remember who you are, they're more likely to reference you over to their colleagues who may have additional postings that they haven't listed elsewhere. Right, right. right. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could always ask a faculty member, what, you know, say if the conversation turns to, oh, and do you have other, is there any way in which I can, you know, get involved in the work that you're doing they'll say mm, well you know I, I i already have some students working with me mm -hmm. you can always ask the follow-up question well do you know colleagues of yours who might need a student <laughs> and and just to kind of network it that way right okay great um any more questions amelia yeah i'm sorry i like Hold on, let me turn on my camera. Um, I hopped into the meeting late. I'm cramming this in between classes and dinner, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I just, this may be like a stupid question, but I know in the last um, 
meeting that I went to with the young black professionals, there were all these links in the chat for like all these different fellowships. And I just got so overwhelmed because I was like reading all of them. And I was one, I was like, I don't know what's the difference between one fellowship versus another. And also, um, like I know Deja kind of asked this, but like, is there like what type of perks are there to doing a fellowship rather than just like graduating from undergrad and going straight into the workforce? So I guess those are my two questions. Like what's like the perks of a fellowship and like how to tell the difference between each one to like know which one works for you. So I think that a really good place to, to get started on checking out the programs so you're not so overwhelmed on our academic commons page which is hosted hosted through the library um, we have a pretty comprehensive list of the fellowships that our office is familiar with or advises on and there's kind of a brief overview of information on what each of those programs is and who it's targeted towards um, that usually synthesizes the amount of information that each individual fellowship page has my biggest frustration in the world is the Fulbright website because there's, <laughs> there's too much there to dig through if you don't know what you're looking for. So our website kind of boils it down to the important little nuggets and then we can help you kind of search through um, what it is that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of time with really triangulating into which ones you should apply for our office can obviously be helpful with that either Paul or I we take individual meetings all the time where we're kind of talking through different programs um, generally it helps if you have like three or four that you might be interested in so we can tell you about them um, but those those tend to be good ways to kind of narrow it down and it's overwhelming I, I fully acknowledge it's overwhelming yeah. Um, as far as the benefits to a fellowship versus going directly into the workforce, again, it really depends on what your end goal is. Um, I think a lot of times the initial pull for a lot of fellowship programs is the name that's associated with it. I mean, no one's ever going to tell you that being a Fulbright scholar is a bad get. It's going to look bad on your resume. It's going to look great on your resume being a Boren Fellow or being a CLS recipient, those are all great things to be able to say you did. I think the biggest benefit to doing a fellowship program is you're not doing it completely on your own. You have an organization that's really behind you, especially if you're planning on doing something internationally. I think that that can kind of smooth a lot of the fears that go with the transition of either working or studying internationally. Um, with programs like the Princeton Inn Fellowships, you have an incredibly robust alumni association that's affiliated with that. Same thing with Fulbright, same thing with Boren, Pickering, Wrangell, all of the programs that have initiatives um, also have really wonderful alumni networks. Whereas going into the workforce, it's you're just you're on your own, you're doing it yourself. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I did that. <laughs> so it just it really depends on on what it is that you're hoping to to accomplish with that time. And is it usually like through one university? Like if I were to go straight from undergrad to grad school, like mm -hmm. would the fellowship transfer to the new university or what is it like tied to a university it depends <laughs> that's my most and least favorite <laughs> answer it um, each yeah. program is going to be different so for example if you're interested in a pickering or a wrangle or a pain award all of which would ultimately funnel you into the foreign service in some capacity um that will follow you to whatever university you plan on attending for, for your master's program. They're all housed through Howard University right here in DC, um, but you don't have to go to Howard. A lot of students end up at Michigan or Texas or um, Georgetown a lot of times. Um, GW, we we always have at least one Pickering or Angle Fellow at GW as a master's student. Other fellowships are going to be structured a little bit differently. Some of them are not academic in nature, so you would be taking time between your undergraduate or master's degree. Um, that's programs like Fulbright or um, the Pickering. Nope, just kidding. Princeton in letters, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but those programs are going to be more like a 
gap year experience. It's not a gap year, you're working, but whatever. Um, and then other programs like the Fulbright Academic Awards are going to award you to go to a specific university. So if you apply for the Fulbright at the London School of Economics, you can only go to the London School of Economics. You can't take that and go to King's College or something like that. Um, so this is an instance where if you're interested in a particular program, Paul or I would be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you to kind of talk through the specifics of that program and, and what it would look like moving forward. And that's true for all of you, so. Well, thank you so much. That definitely helped because I was so overwhelmed and I was like, I'm just not gonna do it because I don't <laughs> research it, but. Well, we don't want that. Our office is yeah. here to help make it less yeah. daunting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And and like academic commons has this sort of it's a sort of rudimentary filtering system that you could, but that's helpful, you know, as far as like narrowing the list down, um, you know. And so I encourage you, well, let's just play around with it and see what programs sort of come up top of the list. Okay, that's also very helpful to know because. Yeah, like I just tend to focus on like small things and I feel like if I read all of them, I'd want to go to all of them. For <laughs> so. It would also take you weeks to read all of them. <laughs> Please don't do that. Uh, you can narrow it down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Of course. Any other last question? Hi, uh, this is Simeon. I, I have a question here. Um, so I'm also a sophomore um, in Elliot, and I just want to, I'm just kind of curious, um, because when I think about research, I think about uh, people sitting on their computer and like diving through databases and sitting in a library and taking notes on um, a bunch of different texts uh, and maybe doing like a few interviews here and there. So I just wanted to ask, what are some, because um, I know a lot of students probably have some kind of interaction with you before they embark on any kind of like an independent project. So what are some of the more unique um, things that students have done over the years or what's like a project that was kind of unconventional in your view that was interesting? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the ones the ones that get funded tend to be very, very idiosyncratic, you know, like very particular. So, you know, everything from uh, looking at um, childhood resiliency in the migrant camps in Thailand, <laughs> you know, or it's like looking at these particular communities along the coast of Indonesia and how they're um, looking to conserve their marine resources in order to make you know sustain uh, their food supply and so and then looking at maybe the ways in which they're, they're using ecotourism as a as an avenue to sustain their communities economically as they're striving to preserve their marine resources so it tends to be very very particular um and in that regard it, yeah, I, I think when it comes to Elliott School students, they're oftentimes, again, pre-COVID, <laughs> maybe post-COVID, like going abroad for the summer for several weeks, undertaking um, research in the locale itself, and then meeting local residents and maybe arranging interviews um, with officials, oftentimes with the aid and support of your faculty mentor might have community connections. Um, so it tends to have that that sort of feel to it and and, and consistent that, that kind of work, you know, for an international affairs student. I think. So it's but some really cool stuff. Sometimes what happens too, just to, you know, there's kind of like a different a different approach. Um, one student <clears throat> Uh, secured, and I don't know exactly how she did, but she, she, she secured an internship with the uh, the equivalent of the IRS in Ecuador. 
And so what she ended up doing was she, what she proposed was she wanted to see if there were wage differentials um, between um, firms headed by women as opposed to firms headed by men. And, and so she had all the data because she was, she was working in this office. And so she just used the opportunity of the internship to do this kind of research project, which I thought was pretty cool. Hmm. I didn't know about that one. That sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we did a, yeah, the, we had, we've had a lot to go to Ecuador for. So we had one student fairly recently who was um, studying um, uh, the services provided to disabled citizens in Ecuador. Um, she was a dance major as well as an international affairs major. And so she, what she ended up doing was she created a choreography <laughs> based upon her research in Ecuador. Um, and in Indo Indonesia tends to be a popular place. Um, some, sometimes West Africa. Um, we've had some some students do projects in West Africa, East Africa. But you know, the award is enough money to make it go. That you know, so it provides five thousand dollars. So, so particularly if you're heading to the developing world, you can really, you know, you can really make a go of it for for a few weeks. <laughs> the dollar the dollar goes pretty far. Uh, do you mind speaking on kind of the research experience you guys have had for students this semester and potentially next semester since everything is virtual? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I think <clears throat> a, a number of students have been doing remote work, so it, it has tended to be like data analysis. That you could do from anywhere. Um, uh, so, so one kind of category falls under there. Another kind of category is um, working with faculty in digesting articles and, and creating annotated bibli bibliographies, and you know, digest helping to digest the scholarship that, even though we're in, you know, kind of facing a pandemic. Um, you know, scholarship is still being produced, and so it still needs to be read, it still needs to be digested, and um, in fact, we are looking, you know, for help in, in doing that. Um, so I'd say they tend to fall into those two different categories. Um, when it comes to students doing independent research, since they can't travel, um, yeah, it's been kind of like lining up Skype and that's what they're doing. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? If you do have other questions or you have questions you don't want to ask with the whole group present, you can obviously send. Paul or myself an email um, or the general email address for our office. Um, but it was good talking to all of you, the few of you spaces that I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really yeah, a great, great uh, meeting with you all. And as Maggie said, you know, please, yeah, don't don't hesitate to kind of reach out to us because we we'll be uh, we'll be uh, thrilled to kind of be able to. Um, meet you in <laughs> individually in person <laughs> whatever that means anymore but um yeah it was great talking to all of you and let us know if you need any help with things yep thank you guys so much okay well thanks kelsey for setting this up mm -hmm. bye everyone bye bye thank you bye